Hello and welcome to our third problem now in um, module 10 where we're doing hypothesis testing on two population means. So this one here I didn't really give it any context I just wanted to do one example uh, where we are performing a test on a difference in means where the magnitude of the difference is something other than zero. Uh, a lot of the exercise I think the last couple that I've done is a test, um, testing for a hypothesized difference of zero and I find a lot of the examples in textbooks are often looking at a hypothesized value of zero as well. So I thought here let's uh, let's mix it up a little bit and uh, we'll do something a little different. So here we have just some generic um, numbers that we're going to work with. So we have the following results come from two independent random samples from two populations. Uh, so we have sample A, sample B, okay, with sample sizes. So this is, uh, this is our sample size, these are our X bars, and these are our sigmas. Um, so, and it says, and we're going to assume we know sigma, so that's our population standard deviation. So let's, uh, let's just look at this test. Formula and hypothesis test to determine that the mean of population A is five yards greater than the mean of population B. So what I would do, formulate the null and alternative. I'm going to set this up. I'm just going to use the, the letters mu A, mu B, mu A, mu B. And I want to see that A is five yards greater than B. So this difference is something more than five. And the null, uh, the null hypothesis is that no, it is not uh, more than five. So that's, that's the only difference here. Uh, I could set this up as population one and two. If I wanted to do that as well, that would be perfectly fine. And then I would just have to say, well, this is my population one and this is my population two. Okay, so that's all there is there. Uh, nothing too, too different other than this being a five and not a zero. Now, the reason why, uh, I think in a previous video I talked about how, you know, we can sometimes just formulate these like this. And this would be fine if that difference value was zero. But in this case, it would have to be something like this. Right, mu one is greater than uh, mu two plus five, and to to me, as much as this is perfectly accurate, and it's really it's saying the same thing, I find it's really tedious to to not only read but to interpret. Uh, mu one is e is equal to or greater than mu two plus five yards. It's a little bit convoluted. If I just do it this way, uh, now I can say, well, the difference between these two, mu1 and mu2, is greater than five yards. So I would encourage students to write it like this. Uh, okay, moving on. So alpha is going to be uh, 0.03 here. Something also a little bit different. We've been using 0.05 for so long. So let's uh, go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So the formula here is the same. Uh, that hasn't changed, only now, of course, here we're going to have a value other than zero to put in. And let's get in the rest, n1, sigma 2 over n2. So let's enter in our values. My mean of sample A, this is 235 yards, minus sample B, 228, minus now that hypothesized difference. Uh, is 5 divided by there's standard error here I've got 5.8 squared divided by 35 and 3.9 squared divided by 30 okay now let's uh, get that calculator and here again I'm going to do this in steps uh, just to avoid any silly calculation or button press mistakes. 5.8 squared divided by 35 plus 3.9 squared divided by 30 equals and square root that. So my denominator is 1.22. 1 1.22 and the numerator 235 minus 228 minus 5 
So I've got a numerator 2. And so now I have 2 divided by 1.22. 1.64, 1.64, okay, good. So we have our Z statistic. Now, same as always, we wanna go to our tables and find our uh, corresponding probability. This is an upper tail test, so we wanna make sure we get that upper tail uh, probability. Uh, so 1.64, again, if we come down here, 1.64, and that gives us a value right here. So this is, this area here is 0.9495. This is an upper tail test though, so what I want is this, 9495. And so once again, 1 minus 0 0.9495, 0 0.0505. Okay, and then if we went just to verify, look at our negative side, and I have 1.64, and there we are, 0 0.0505, just as we would expect. So we have a p-value, I'm going to come up here, our p-value is 0 0.0505. And do we have evidence to reject? Well, that rejection rule is if it's less than or equal to alpha, in this case, 0 0.0505 is greater than alpha, so we do not reject. I do not have sufficient evidence uh, to support the alternative hypotheses, so I'm unable to say that the difference in the average of these two samples is greater than five. Okay, uh, so what's, uh, what's next? Oh, our critical value approach. So our critical value that relates to our alpha of 0.03. So if we go back down to our tables, and I'm looking in this body of probabilities. I want to find the value of 0.03. I think the closest we'll find looks like right about there is as close as we'll get. So that's going to be 1.88 uh, is our critical value. So Z alpha is 1.88. And again, we will reject if our test statistic is greater than or equal to the critical value. And here I have a test statistic of 1.64, critical value of 1.88. So again, we get the same result, same conclusion, do not reject. I have insufficient evidence to show that the, um, the difference between these two populations averages is uh, greater than five. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Having that uh, a different hypothesized value doesn't change things much. It changes just what what shows up in the uh, hypotheses, and of course it comes up in the interpretation of the results. Uh, but otherwise, um, nothing much has changed uh, as far as the process and the calculations and things are concerned. So that's it. That's good. I hope that that helps. Uh, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.